Today we're going to explore some of rock and roll's coolest guitars. The band is Blink-182, the player is Tom DeLonge, and the guitars in question are his Fender Stratocasters. The Fender Stratocaster is the guitar that he's most associated with, and for good reason. Let's explore why. But first, special thanks to Stefan underscore K on Instagram, who is a fountain of guitar knowledge pertaining to Tom DeLonge. In fact, he even owns two of Tom's guitars that we're going to talk about today, and he sent me a ton of great info. Let's begin. On May 6th, 1987, in a quiet suburb in Oregon, a boy named Tom had an experience that changed his life. Tom was staying with a friend who was at school all day. Alone with nothing to do, Tom picks up his friend's guitar and begins to teach himself how to play. In fact, he tells Rolling Stone, quote, It was unreal. I felt like I was a musician instantly. Tom would later reveal that the story did not end there. In his upcoming memoir titled, I'm Tom DeLong, Look at My Dick, he reveals that later that night, he went walking through the forest with his friend when they suddenly were both frozen in place. According to Tom, quote, It was insane. I've never felt anything like that before, and I knew there was someone or something out there, but we couldn't see it. Then it happened. A bright beam of light hit me and knocked me off my feet and began pulling me towards something. I couldn't see what it was, though. My eyes wouldn't stay open. All I could do was blink to get a brief glimpse. Time stopped, and I could only hear an eerie, distorted sound. When my eyes adjusted, I saw it. A Fender Stratocaster made of pure light energy was literally floating down from the sky and it hovered right in front of me. Smack in the middle of it was a note and it read, We want to believe in punk. I knew from that moment on my mission in life was to form the greatest pop punk band the galaxy had ever known. Hey. Okay, maybe that was all made up, but it's way better than the real story, which is that Tom's Oregonian friend introduced him to bands including Dinosaur Jr., The Descendants, and Stiff Little Fingers, Up Your Butt. And he began his obsession with punk rock. See how aliens are way more fun and interesting than real life? Anyway, shortly thereafter, Tom goes to camp. Church camp. While there, he met another kid with a guitar, and he wouldn't put that kid's guitar down either, which caused the other boy to challenge Tom to a knife fight. Tom won easily, and we won't mention what happened to the other kid. R.I.P. Little Jimmy. In 1992, Tom gets kicked out of Poway High School for showing up drunk to a basketball game and is forced to transfer to Rancho Bernardo High School where he befriends Carrie Key and Carrie's girlfriend, Ann Hoppus. Ann then introduces Tom to her brother, Mark, and the two form what would become Blink-182, along with fellow Rancho Bernardo student, Scott Rayner on the drums. So Blink-182 is formed, even though it's not called that yet, and starts writing songs and playing shows. For years, Tom favored playing Stratocasters, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. In 1992, Tom got his first Strat, most likely a Mexican Squire. This guitar was used until around 1994. I can't find any photos where the guitar has humbuckers, so he probably didn't make any mods other than adding stickers, which his Strats are kind of known for, as I'm sure you're aware. You can see the Red Squire Strat in MTV's The Road Home video. The next one is almost certainly a 1994 Fender 40th Anniversary Strat in Olympic white that was covered in stickers during the Cheshire era. Some sources online say that it's got an alder body, which doesn't make sense, because if it's a 40th anniversary Strat, that would mean that they're recreating the 1954 Strat, which had an ash body. Fender didn't switch to using alder for Strats until 1956. Side note, Tom DeLong and Rivers Cuomo both play Strats with humbuckers covered in stickers with a lightning guitar strap. Billy Joe Armstrong also plays a sticker-covered humbucking Strat, but no lightning strap. Sad. The white Strat had its stock pickups replaced with a Seymour Duncan Hot Rails in the neck, a JB Jr. in the middle, and a DiMarzio X2N in the bridge, which was routed to fit the humbucker at an angle similar to Eddie Van Halen's Frankenstrat 
and Billy Joe Armstrong's Blue Fernandez Strat. Rivers Cuomo's Warmoth Strat has a humbucker in the bridge, but it's not at an angle. Watch those videos next. The DiMarzio bridge pickup was added between October 94 and February 95. The music video for Damn It features the white Strat and was filmed in May of 1997. It features the guitar covered in stickers, except for the lag wagon sticker. Sometime after 97, Tom removed the stickers and swapped the DiMarzio with a Seymour Duncan Invader in the bridge. He also replaced the JB Jr. with a Duncan Lil Screamin' Demon in the middle. This is said to be the guitar you hear on Dude Ranch. In present day, the guitar looks like this. You can see the sticker residue outlines, which is pretty darn cool. You can also see the hole for the tremolo arm bar. Here's a shot of the headstock. If it is a 40th anniversary Strat, it would have this. And this is probably why Tom put a sticker over it. You can see where the Descendant sticker used to be covering the Fender logo. The white Strat was also featured in the music video for M&Ms. By mid-1999 at the latest, we start seeing Tom's custom shop Fender Strats being played live. Tom got these just after Enema of the State was released in June of that year. These are said to be built by Alex Perez of the Fender Custom Shop. The specs for these custom shop strats are as follows. The bodies are made of alder, the necks are made of maple and are a medium C shape and have a nine and a half inch radius. The headstocks are the larger 1970 style and there's usually a string roller instead of the traditional string tree. The fretboards are made of rosewood with medium jumbo frets and they usually have dot inlays but a few have custom inlays but we'll talk about those later. The pickups used are the Seymour Duncan Invader, which has, quote, ultra high output with a huge sound, end quote, according to Seymour Duncan's website. The pickups are mostly white, but sometimes black. According to a source at Fender, the tuners are Fender vintage style, though some say Spurzel locking tuners, probably because there are variations on Tom's different strats, and he may have had someone make changes after he got the guitars from Fender. There's one chrome volume knob, a 500K volume pot. Tom's custom shop strats did not have a treble bleed even though some of the signature production models do. There's a white perloid pickguard. There's also usually a hardtail bridge, though there are a few with a hole for the whammy bar. Now let's talk about each strat and if it has something other than what we just went over. First is a faded green strat. This is said to be a prototype for Tom's signature strats. There is debate as to the name of the color. Some say it's faded surf green, others claim it's aged sweet pea. This guitar can be seen in the Pursuit of Tone documentary from around 2016. Unlike most of Tom's strats, this one is not a hardtail, rather it has a tremolo. Check out the hole for the wiggle stick. It's got a perloid pick guard, but this one has a slot cut out for the pickup selector, but without the actual selector switch installed. Next is the Chrome Silver Strat. Tom played this guitar at the Reading Festival in 2000. It's got a tremolo. Check out the hole for the wiggle stick. This one is the Teal Green Metallic Strat. It's got a tremolo, but I'm told it was originally a hardtail and had all black hardware that was changed at an unknown date. Now we can talk about something a little bit different. Here we have the orange Subcaster Strat. This is one of Tom's guitars that Stefan now owns. According to Fender, the scale length is 27 inches, which is the baritone scale length, as opposed to the standard Strat length of 25 and a half inches. The baritone has Spurzel locking tuners and a Seymour Duncan Invader pickup, as per usual. Alex Perez said that he and Todd Krauss of the Fender Custom Shop were the ones that made the Subcaster. They custom made the decal with rub-on transfer letters. This guitar was repainted white and then spray painted by Tom for the reissued sale. This was used for playing Adam Song and Obvious. And you can see it here when they performed on MTV's Total Request Live in 1999. Tom needed a backup baritone guitar in case the orange one broke, so Fender sent him a yellow one. According to Tom's guitar tech, Doug, this was Tom's least favorite guitar and he hardly ever used it. It had a maple fretboard with dot inlays and Tom never liked the look of it. This one also has a smaller traditional sized headstock that you'd see on most strats and different tuners which are said to be Fender's locking staggered tuners. Now to the famous Seafoam Green Strat. This one has the custom punker guy inlays made by Rob Thorne at Fender. This is the strat that's in all the music videos for Enema of the State, including all the small things, what's my age again, and Adam's song. 
Other than that, it's the same as the other strats. In a 2012 Instagram post, Tom shows us a broken brown strat body with a caption reading, the old seafoam, oops. So the seafoam strat was most likely repainted brown with the orange racing stripe in 2000 or 2001, possibly in an homage to the San Diego Padres, though it's also said that Tom's wife came up with the color combination, so only they really know for sure. My sources indicate that the guitar was smashed in 2001. After Padre was smashed, the neck was salvaged and attached to a new brown strat with an orange racing stripe. This has been confirmed by the Fender Custom Shop builder Alex Perez. This guitar was used on the Pop Disaster Tour and with Boxcar Racer because Tom really loved the neck from the Seafoam Green Strat, aka Padre No. 1, and he wanted to keep using it instead of getting a new one. This is the other guitar that Stefan owns. Around the time of Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, Tom got a few new guitars. This white Strat has the same specs as the others, but in Olympic white, and it has the custom Eye of Providence pyramid inlays. It was used in the Rock Show music video. Black Strat number one. This one's got the Freemason inlays, which are the Masonic square and compasses, and it's got the Broken Heart sticker. This guitar was smashed at the MTV European Music Awards in 2001. It can also be seen on the First Date music video. Black Strat number two has a white racing stripe and can be seen in the Boxcar Racer I Feel So video. Now let's talk about the natural strat with the black racing stripe. There's evidence that Tom had at least two of these made. According to Stefan, Alex Perez said that he had leftover wood from building a bass guitar for Victor Bailey, and that the guitar has a mahogany back, rosewood in the middle, and a koa top. The Invader pickup was swapped out for a DiMarzio DP110 FS1, which is a hotter strat single coil pickup. According to DiMarzio, quote, it's louder, about 25% more power than a stock single coil, and smoother and fatter sounding all around. You can see in these photos that it's got many standard Tom DeLong specs, including a hardtail bridge, rosewood fretboard, chrome volume knob, Freemason inlays, and a black racing stripe. Now here are a few strats from the reissued sale from several years back. Some of them were never actually played by Tom. Tom posted this for sale and wrote about it on Instagram, saying that, quote, This is one of the first guitars I got when Enema of the State came out. It was orange before I painted it this way. I used it hundreds of times on stage to play Adam's song and later Obvious. It's a baritone, so it provided me the tuning required. This would lead us to believe that it's the orange baritone we saw on MTV. But if you look closely, it's got a tremolo bridge and a 24 fret Telecaster neck with a maple fretboard. He doesn't mention that in the post at all, which is strange because the orange baritone we covered earlier has a hardtail bridge and a strat neck with a rosewood fretboard. So this must be another baritone that Fender sent him that he used live in addition to the more well-known orange guitar. Now let's talk about the strats with the least information available. Here's the yellow strat with a rosewood board. Tom says he never used this one. Here's the black strat with three single coil pickups that was used in the Stay Together for the Kids music video. Obviously the difference here, from what can be seen, are the single coil pickups versus the single bridge humbucker that Tom's known for. Also, it looks like it's got the standard controls instead of the single chrome volume knob and a maple fretboard versus rosewood. And finally, we've got a light blue strat with the custom punker inlays. This is probably to the same specs as the others. Throughout the years, Tom has been vocal about his love of the Fender Stratocaster and his belief that aliens exist. He has received a lot of criticism and many have made fun of him, calling him a conspiracy theorist and a flat earth denier. In 2017, the US Navy vindicated Tom's statements by publicly acknowledging the existence of UFOs and government programs investigating aliens. Navy spokesman Joseph Gratisher has confirmed that three videos posted by DeLong's To The Stars organization do in fact show, quote, unidentified aerial phenomena. Tom has since responded to his critics by saying, quote, Told you so, bitches. Throughout the years, Tom DeLong has played a variety of Stratocasters. Hopefully today we learned laughed and loved, and got a little closer to the truth. It's out there. Thanks for watching.